Christ is the light of the world in whom there is no darkness. And today we celebrate the good news that Christ, the light of the world, has triumphed over the darkness. Happy Easter, everyone. Thanks for joining. I wanted to, to warmly welcome you for wherever you're tuning in this morning. You might be here in this great state of New York. You might be in Michigan. You might be in Florida. Who knows? But wherever you're coming in from, thank you for joining us. God welcomes you here, this place, and with this good news. Christ is risen. I want to share with you a video that people in our congregation and outside our congregation made, exclaiming that he is risen. <laughs> He is risen indeed. He has risen. Christ is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He has risen. He has risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen. Jesus has risen. He has risen indeed. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. He, he is risen indeed. He has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. Amen. The Lord is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Welcome back, everybody. As we enter into worship, we will join by singing a familiar and a good hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. We're going to sing the first verse twice over with great acclamation. Here we go. As we enter into worship, typically what we do is we make a confession, a prayer confession, which we place ourselves in front of God for, and, and speaking the things that are in our heart and our mind and laying bare our experience, and maybe the ways even we've fallen short. But today on Easter Sunday, we take time to confess a wonderful reality that Christ, God, is our Redeemer who heals every ill and who draws our lives up from the pit. And so today we take time to read together a psalm, a psalm that was written based on the experience of someone who had been down in the pits of death and whose life was redeemed by God. So I want you to follow along with me. I will read in the regular print and you respond when there is bold print, okay? I'll be reading both of them just so that we can follow through together, but please join in on the bold. 
Maybe if you're at home and you're with your family, you can choose one person to read along with me with the, the regular version, and then everybody else joins in the bold, however you want to do it this morning. Hear this adaptation from Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the helpless. When I was brought low, he saved me. And so I say, return to your rest and fear not, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. What shall I give back to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will offer a toast to this Lord of life. I will say to God, here I am, God, your servant. You have freed me from my chains and fixed my feet in a new way of abundant life. Praise the Lord. This morning, we have an opportunity to praise the Lord for the way in which God has provided abundantly for us. And so I want you to join me in singing back to God praise with the song, Jesus Paid It All. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper's spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he was Praise the one who paid my debt and 
As we continue to celebrate the good news of Easter and to lift up our God, we take a moment to hear from God and God's word, the story of grace that always reminds us of the promises that God has for us in this world. As we do so, allow me to invite us into a posture of prayer. Lord God, you are the one who comes near to us who sees us and moves toward us wherever we are, however we are, with unfailing, unflinching love. And so I pray, however we are showing up this morning, full of Easter joy or maybe still wallowing in darkness, that you meet us there. And through your words, you provide the truth and the grace and the hope that we need today. So come, Holy Spirit, for we are listening. Amen. We have come to the very end of the Gospel of Mark, a story that we've been hearing and learning from, from Christmas up until now. And I invite you to hear this passage um, in the knowledge that, that Christ has gone through all of the suffering and the shame and the cross to see us to this point. So hear this now. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus, James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb. The word and image of the tomb has captivated me lately. A couple of weeks ago, everything was shutting down. I couldn't go to my office every day. I couldn't grab coffee with friends or pastors. I couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't go and make my daily trip to the grocery store, which I didn't need to do in the first place. But anyway, I was sent into this regular rhythm that normal people do. But this time it had this heightened precaution and fear. All of a sudden, life began grinding to a halt. So I would just be at home with my dog, Amos, who's a great comfort. But he doesn't talk much. Every day I'd get up and sit down in front of a computer screen send off emails. I would um, continue to foster this wonderful relationship with the Google support team. I invested a lot of time in trying to think about how to care for people in our community. And sometimes I would remember to eat, but oftentimes I wouldn't. And before I realized that the sun had snuck across my picture window and it was now night. Perhaps my life situation is vaguely familiar to you. It might not be. Either way, I think we're all just trying to make sense of life right now. Since the first week of quarantine, that experience that I was just relating to you, life has improved and and gotten better. But I reflect back on that week, and my mind's eye creates this scene in my head where I'm sitting alone, 
in the dark, isolated, and I can scarcely make out that I'm there. That's kind of the image that's there. And it looks like a cave. And so apparently I was able to complete the very, very difficult process of de-evolution, the regression back into the state of being a caveman. Um, but seriously, it's, it's what it felt like. Uh, and in, in light of our story this morning, in light of this passage that I've been thinking about and reflecting on, I came to see with my mind's eye that it wasn't necessarily a cave, but a tomb. An isolated, dark, confusing place where life is narrow and there is death. And this image of a tomb feels appropriate for this morning. In my vocation, I've, I've had the honor of walking alongside people when they've lost a loved one. The experiences around death vary greatly. But in every case, death brings disorientation and questions and doubts and sadness and loss and silence. This experience is evident from our passage this morning. Three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Joseph, and also Salome, went to the tomb. They were going to make this one last loving act for their teacher and their friend by preparing his body for death. And I imagine they not only brought those spices and those fragrant oils, but they brought with them their questions and their doubts and their sadness and their loss and their silence. Everything was humming along so well just days and weeks prior. But disaster struck and justice turned the other way. And Jesus, an innocent man, a caring man, a good man died. And yet it wasn't just he who died, but there was so much more that died with him. Their hopes for a future where their people would finally be free of the tyrants of their king, the, ty the tyrannical reign of their, their king, and also the horrible, brutal regime of the Romans. What died with him were the hopes that maybe things would change in a new era where kindness and truth and peace won. And all the wickedness and injustices and violence were, would just be some bad dream. Those hopes lived in a tomb now. Right now, in these times we're in, I, I see a tomb. For me, personally, it's, it's not a literal death, but a death and loss of, and disorientation of things, of conveniences, of familiar practices, of connection, of community, of work how I once knew it, the ability to be carefree. And I, I, I think about you. And I wonder if your experience is like mine, that your life is shook by death and you might see a tomb. As a pastor, I, I see these signs this, this of death, this disorientation where days become run, run into one. There's the fear that this could stretch out into months the worry or resentment that we hold towards others who might not be keeping up good practices. And for me, one of, the, one of the deepest sorrows is the disparity that's happening between what I see and experience in my life and only what I can imagine in others. Maybe for some, um, like me, things have changed, but not that much. And you're still comfortable just wrestling with boredom. And that's okay. That's okay. However, I lament that for others, this is life and death. This is losing a job and the heartache that comes with laying off employees. The worry of endangering friends when you ask them to get groceries. The experience of severe isolation because you live alone or are far from a relational network that helps support you. This is about living in fear because you once had chemo or phone calls with loved ones with ventilators, 
or planning a funeral without the consolation of gathering to say goodbye. And the list grows and expands to to thoughts about other people around the world. Maybe like you, like me, begin to wonder with the woman, how are we ever going to roll away the stone? We, like the women, are rocked by this death. But our passage for today offers us such incredible words of consolation and hope. It says, when they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, and it had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. He was crucified, but he has been raised, and he is not here. These words offer three incredible encouragements, good news that fills our day today and can carry us into the future. He was crucified, has been raised, and he is not here. He is crucified. The writer of Hebrews says this in, in chapter five, uh, chapter 4, verse 5. There is one in heaven now who knows our weakness because he has been tested in every way. This story and good book tells us the promise that when we look up to heaven in prayer and in hope for what we really need, especially out of our weakness, we do not have to beg or plead for this God's understanding. Because he has lived our daily deaths. Mark's gospel provides us the most human of the portraits about Jesus. Where he becomes sad, he becomes hungry, he thirsts, he gets sick, tired, mad. And knows the struggle of being lured into doing what's not healthy for us or for others. And on the cross, there's this incredible moment of isolation. He's deserted by his friends because they all scatter like sheep when a wolf comes. He hangs on the cross and the women aren't there, but they watch from a distance. The criminals who flank him yell insults at him. The people on the ground mock his willingness to save others, but not himself. It's a growing picture of the depth, the horrors that we can experience in human life. Jesus knows the death and the tombs. The death of the coronavirus that grips us and the thousands of deaths that we experience and are acquainted with by being human. Due to the ways that we have hurt others or the way we struggle against sin and the powerlessness to overcome it. Jesus knows all of these things. And it's not just that he is acquainted with these things, but that something has definitively happened. He has been raised. It's an odd phrase, right? He has been raised. It's a passive sentence. But what is behind that is that not that Jesus has raised himself, but that God raised him to life from death. God raised him to life and was pleased to do so. It exhibits the very power of God over the powers of death that might grip this world. And it also shows us the very delight and heart of God. In this one event, we see the power and the joy of God, not only to lift up Jesus, but also how God comes and declares powerful promise, promises to you and delights in these promises he gives. So that where there is disorientation, God speaks clarity. That God is here among us and powerful and active and moving and redeeming life. Where there are questions of doubt, God has provided an assurance of his presence and his work. Where there is sadness, God provides joy. Where there is doubt, peace, in our silence, God is speaking. He is risen. In death, there is life. He has been raised. And he is not here. There is a a wonderful reflection that I read in this Ignatian prayer book this past week about resurrection, and it says this. Resurrection refers to the event of God's transformation of life, making all things new, as in a new creation. Resurrection is a conquering of sin and 
sin and death once and for all. In this passage, we hear about God, God's once overcoming death and sin and evil. But Christ is on the move. He is not here because he has gone into the world and he is continuing to overcome those deaths and those tombs, that evil, that sin, everything that would hold us down from what God has for us and for you. And so this morning we proclaim the good news that he is risen and he is not here. And that he continues through the power of the Holy Spirit to go into this world and be present and active through the life of the church and through people that embody the very spirit and heart of God to be working and renewing and transforming these daily deaths. And all we have to do is open our eyes to see the good work that's happening around us, to see those resurrection moments occurring. And so the task is for us to ask the question today and tomorrow, how am I catching up with God? Like the women who are called to go into Galilee and meet up with Jesus to participate in his work, how do I enter into this week to participate into that work that Christ is doing, that he's gone ahead of me to do? It's a powerful question to reflect on. I imagine you're already doing wonderful things, but I pray you step into it with the, with the deep, deep, powerful hope of what can happen when we step into this resurrection work with our God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. This morning, we have the joy to move toward communion. And here at Linwood Reformed Church, um, when we gather at this table, we do so when in remembrance, communion, and hope. We remember the perfect self-offering that Christ offered for himself, of himself, for the sin of the whole world. His, his incredible outpouring of love. When we come and celebrate communion, we also celebrate the connection that we have to God and to each other. As we come here, we also know that this meal is a foretaste of the meal that we will share when Christ comes to take us to the place that he has been preparing for us. And so this morning, I want to invite you here at, to this table. Here at Linwood, we say that anyone who loves Christ and wants to be more like him in every way are welcome to feast on this table. Today, we're celebrating communion very differently than how we have done it in the past. Uh, we're not together, and so maybe you have the elements at home. Maybe you have uh, grape juice and bread. Or maybe you have things that can stand in in this moment, we make exceptions, uh, to, to be those symbols of grace so that you can pass the communion cup around. And I will lift up a prayer, and the prayer will come up on your screen so that we can pray together. So follow along in the bold. First, I want to I wanna first make a mention because there might be some people tuning in who might not have participated in communion or been a part of this. And if that is, is, is not something you're used to, I pray that this is a prayerful moment, a moment where you can sit back and reflect on that story of grace or maybe just the words that you are hearing in this prayer. And I, I hope that it can be a prayerful moment rather than one um, that you feel excluded from. Um, so please join in however it is most comfortable for you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places. O Lord our God. Almighty and everlasting creator. You made heavens, the heavens with all its hosts and the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. But you show, have shown us the fullness of your love by sending into the world your son, Jesus Christ. The eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty savior, who has brought us back to you, we praise and bless you, O oh God. 
and with your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. And we sing together this familiar hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. And together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray. That the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us the very body and blood of Christ. And our communion and joining in it. And grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up into all things, into Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, and come soon. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, was eating with his disciples. And he took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after they had eaten, he took the cup, and he poured it out, and said, this is the new covenant. This is the new promise that I am making with you for the forgiveness of sins for you and for many to come. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The bread of life, the cup of salvation. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Let's take time to maybe serve each other bread. And take your bread. Keep off a piece. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. After they had finished eating, he took the cup. And so we take it now and we drink the cup of salvation for you. Amen. So, um, we now move to a time of prayer, and I want to give thanks, um, a lot of gratitude. We, have a, we had a little bit of a resurrection experience of our own um, here. I want to give thanks for Ashley and Clinton, Jess Smith, uh, for Amy, for all the people in Debbie Peretta who made this thing come together. We had to totally redo our, our feed and everything this morning, and the amount of work that they did in a 20-minute span of time truly was a sign of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, I, I um, also want to lift up the good work of our mission team. Um, they called around to our different mission partners and heard about the needs. And so one cool opportunity for you to participate in giving back is for you to kind of look through your pantry or some food that um, you might have and drop them off at our donation boxes, which are here at the church. Um, there's one for Sikkim, Synecdoche Inner City Ministry, and also one for the Gilderland Food Pantry. 
Um, they're at the side entrance here, and you can just drop them off. We'll be taking them over to those places uh, because right now they're hitting hard times. Um, the other thing is that organizations we work with also need masks. So if you're making masks in any way, you can take those masks and you can put them in the donation bins. Just make sure they're in a bag, um, and we will be sure to um, give them to organizations. If you aren't here and you can't donate to Limwood, find a way to connect with your local food pantry um, or different organizations that are caring for people really well. I offered that up. Uh, lastly, um, maybe you could take time after this to talk with um, the people who are with you, or maybe call a friend or a family member or somebody you love and talk about prayer requests and pray with them, because um, we will now move into a time of prayer. Um, let's, let's pray. Lord our God, we give you thanks for the gifts of grace you've given us, your word and the gifts of wine and bread, so that we can know your grace and we can taste it. Pray that today we might come to know deeply of the hope that you provide. We pray for all those whose lives have changed dramatically and who are facing death because of the current crisis we are in. Pray that your spirit is guiding us through this and beyond it. Thank you for different healthcare professionals and different uh, government officials and different people who are helping to creatively care for this, our communities and this world. God, we also pray for those places and those people whose lives are affected irrespective of the coronavirus. To people who are longing for daily necessities like clean water or food or peace in their communities or justice come. God, may your, your church be an agency of change, participating in your resurrection goodness so that we can embody the kind of resurrection hope for this world. But I also pray your Holy Spirit falls freshly upon anyone in all organizations that are doing work that, that fits your heart and your will for this world. May your spirit be moving and may we have eyes open enough to see. Lift up all the people tuning in right now and may your spirit um, not only provide for them for what they have need of, but also give them a special blessing renewing to be your people in this coming week. All this pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. In our service, we take time to give back to God a little bit of what God has given to us. And so right now, uh, as a pastor, I recognize that might, this might be a very financially tough time. If you do have need, I ask you to reach out to us at Linwood. It is myself. You can email me at Pastor Garrett, that's Garrett with two R's and one T, uh, at linwoodreformed.org. You can give us a call, 518-356-4327. We'd like to figure out how to come alongside you to support you, pray with you. Um, in addition, uh, if you are somebody who's able to provide financially right now and you want to support our ministry, um, I invite you to either send in a check by the mail or you can go on to our website, uh, limwoodreform.org backslash giving, and you can fill out um, a one-time gift or a reoccurring gift. If you have any questions, again, email me or give us a call at the office be happy to help you out and we really appreciate your support of our ministry thank you uh, I believe uh, we are going to be sometimes I forget the service so there's always a very human moment where I forget where I'm at um, <laughs> and so I believe we're moving into uh, our last song so would you please join me in the song Christ is risen <laughs> As I prepare, I also wanted to make a mention that um, Gene, our music director, and a bunch of people have been working on how to do a virtual choir. So they've been sending in recordings, and um, that's coming through. It just wasn't ready enough for today, but I'm really excited about what that can hold for the future. And I just want to give a shout out to them. Uh, they're doing good work, and we will have something soon that we can um, yeah, show everybody and worship to. All right. Christ is risen.
is the other Puma part where I forget what I'm singing and playing and forget the words. So have grace for me, people. Have grace for me. Let no one caught in sin remain inside the lie of inward shame. Fix our eyes upon the cross. Run to him who showed great love and bled for us. Freely you bled for us. Christ is risen from the dead. Trampling over death by death. Come awake, come awake. Come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead. We are one with him again. Come awake, come awake. Come and rise up from the grave. Beneath the weight of all our sin, you bow to none but heaven's will. No seam of hell, no scoffer's crown. you go into this week, may you go in the knowledge that Christ has been crucified, that he has been raised, and that he goes out before you. And so may you know that the Spirit of God is with you every step of the way, is with us, and is caring and loving this world into new life and into completion. Go in peace. And everybody said, Amen. Peace of Christ be with you.